Hey, Billy, you know what's awesome? What's that? Ghostbusters! Oh, yeah! <laughs> I'm gonna ask you a trick question, because I'm sure you've seen a lot of Ghostbusters. Which of which <laughs> version of Ghostbusters is your favorite version? Yeah, but I have to go with just the the first movie, for me. Okay, and that's why I said this is a trick question. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's the there's, original movie right. version, then there's the edited for TV version, <laughs> and then there's the version that I saw. Which was, um, I may I've probably mentioned it in episode one with Karate Kid, where my friend, who was the preacher's son, had a trampoline, and we jump off the roof on the trampoline, right? Kick each other in the head. Well, this kid, his name's Trey Travis. Um, we were friends on Facebook, but he <laughs> unfriended me because I think he's he is a minister now, and I am. Very much not one. So, uh, <laughs> I, I think he got tired of my horror movie references and, sure. and stuff. But anyway, back in the day, we were buds and we were watching movies. And his, his parents were, for, 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 for ministers, they had all of the stuff. They had the big speakers. They had the awesome couch. They had all of the movies, but yeah. what his dad would do is he would take the, the movies and he would dub the movies onto a VCR, ta onto a tape, mm -hmm. and he would, then he would hit pause, or like he would mute the bad words. Yeah. So you'd be watching Ghostbusters, and they'd be saying words, and then all of a sudden... <laughs> Then they come back in the middle of a phrase, and you'd be like, "I don't, I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but let's keep going because right. you know, like whatever." And uh, I, I mentioned in our episode talking about Jaws too, how Dad fell asleep on the couch, like he he started <laughs> taking out the commercials, yeah. and then in the second half of the movie, the commercials <laughs> just like came back in. Right. This kid's this kid's version of Ghostbusters is like every. Bad word. And I'm talking like even even so far down as crap. It was like I just and, and of course we're we're talking about Ackroyd. We're talking right. about yeah. Bill like, Murray. They're, I mean. they're just like this this movie's full of nice and bad words. Mm -hmm. But they were all muted out. And they were all muted out among like like the whole conversation was pretty much just like censored. Right. And then apparently Pastor Travis fell asleep. Because right on top of the building, turns around and is like, let's turn, let's tell, let's, let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. <laughs> and like, 10 year old us were like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the breakthrough. <laughs> they said a bad word on Pastor Travis's tape. <laughs> We've hit the promised land. We've broken through. <laughs> I'm just thinking about so many of the big lines in the movie. It's like, yes, it's true. This man has no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, that's exactly how it's like, it works. What? What? What, is, what does he not have? <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's it's good stuff. Man. You know, you know so, that, so, that's so, still so. that's still a thing, man. I mean, people still heavily edit the movies for their kids. I mean, it's it's still a practice. I prefer mm -hmm. when they just change the words to something else for regular TV because Smokey and the Bandit has a whole different life on TV because there's words that, you know, I'm going to get you, you scumbum. I mean, <laughs> it's like, what? Scumbum? Where did that come from? <laughs> the, the, the best part was Big Lebowski. Big Lebowski has so many F-bombs in it, so many F-bombs. Like, that should never have been edited for TV. But they did it, and he's like, this is what happens when you meet a stranger in the Alps. <laughs> like when he's smashing the car. <laughs> this is what happens when you meet a stranger in the Alps, Larry. <laughs> hey, Die Hard 3, man. When Samuel Jackson says you're a racist melon farmer. <laughs> I know 
oh, your problem. You're a racist melon farmer. <laughs> I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, in our modern society, and you look at you look at places like New York who have cleaned up Central Park. There's, it's no longer full of porn stores and criminals and all that stuff. It's just full of criminals and <laughs> Applebee's. What's the fun in that? <laughs> they do. <laughs> Every now and then they're like, "Oh, if you had the uh, the uh, <laughs> the DeLorean, where would you go?" And like, I'd like to go to like pre Giuliani New York and just take a look. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. That's pretty rough. <laughs> it is pretty rough, but you know, <laughs> that's the that's the world in which our Ghostbusters live. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> Ghostbusters is so awesome. I mean, yeah, man, it's such a phenomenon. I mean, you had. It's kind of a confusing name, and I think it's why you threw me at the beginning, because there was a kid's show before this called The Ghostbusters. <laughs> there was a cartoon that was called The Ghostbusters. Then this movie came out, was Ghostbusters. Then you had another cartoon that came out called The Real Ghostbusters. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to keep it all straight, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And Pastor Travis's Ghostbusters, because... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pretty much the original the, the original Ghostbusters minus the bad words <laughs> and and then plus some. <laughs> but the the uh the the whole thing about the Ghostbusters again at the, was that 90 94 84 <laughs> 84 85 something yeah. like that every single person in the movie was huge like yeah. it was it was an all-star cast yeah. like everybody in the movie bill murray top of his game dan Aykroyd, top of his game um yeah, i remember in the yeah no i remember in the 90s when wayne's world came out and i remember my dad he's he was a pop culture guy you know he's kind of cynical because he'd seen a lot of stuff he's like wayne's world came out and he's like those guys don't hold a candle to like Ackroyd and huh. yeah, uh, you know, they're like he's just they're like there was Gen One and then Gen Two and Gen Two was just much, and um, I still kind of agree because if you watch those old yeah. original Saturday Night Lives, um, but to be fair, they were unshackled. Yes, they were yeah. allowed to do whatever they wanted to do it, by the it, by the time. Yep. I mean, but by, by the time the second gen came along, they they had standards and practices and yeah. all kinds of stuff that they couldn't do anymore. Yeah. Whereas you could, you're with, getting in trouble for it the very first time with the original mm-hmm. group. Whereas here, those rules have already been set, so you already knew where the line was. Belushi didn't yeah. know where the line was. If he did, he would have snorted it. Yep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And um, you know, you got. And I'm sure you've seen the movie that made us, where Dan Aykroyd pretty much yeah. promised Bill Murray, but they didn't know if they had him. Yeah. But of course, yeah. then it's Ivan Reitman and Bill Murray, so they were friends. So I don't know that it was ne- that was necessarily true, because yeah. Ivan Reitman made Bill Murray and vice versa. So that, I'm, well, I'm pretty sure Bill Bill Murray was in that from the beginning. Well, but. Uh, imagine you know the story of imagine John Belushi in this movie. Mm-hmm. What a, what what a different turn it would have taken, right? So this is, and you said it while ago. This is Bill Murray at the top of his game, man. He took what he did in Meatballs and was just rolling with it, man. That's pretty funny. He's rolling with Meatballs, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but really, did, I mean, did he ever really change character from Meatballs all the way through these? It's the same character. Did he change character in anything? He's the same character in chat. Like, he's, he's just the, Bill Murray. The thing, I mean, the thing about Bill Murray is, it, it's weird because like a criticism of Tom Cruise can be applied to Bill Murray. Absolutely. And this is that Tom Cruise is just Tom Cruise. He's he's jet fighter pilot Tom yeah. Cruise, or he's you know alien fighter Tom Cruise, or whatever he is. He's just Tom Cruise with crooked teeth. He's just Tom Cruise. Yeah. 
And then you take that same criticism and you're like, well, it's just Bill Murray. He's the same, he's the same guy in Zombieland as he is in Ghostbusters. And Absolutely. you're like, yeah, and that's and that's awesome. Yep. Because somehow it just works. And it's weird because I've read stuff about Bill Murray, about him being just this... His own brother, Joel <laughs> Murphy. Murray. Joel Murray was like, yeah, I showed up to New York for my six. 16th or 18th birthday and bill wouldn't tell me where i'm going and we had like reservations to this awesome thing and he's like yeah and he just wander around central park and wouldn't tell me what was going on and he just took us down to this blues bar and met all these awesome people and he's like is this good enough for you like <laughs> bill is just a weird guy yep and I, did, I didn't mean to say murphy because i was thinking eddie murphy because sure. of saturday night live but that's yeah yeah yeah, it's funny, you know, doing the Tom Cruise thing, because the difference is, is, well, besides the popularity, who would you rather hang out with? Tom Cruise from all these movies? Or go hang out a weekend with Bill Murray, being the character that he is in Stripes and Meatball? Uh -huh. I mean, obviously, this is who you want to hang out with. So, I think it just gave a bit more credibility of, it's the cool uncle, or the cool cousin, right? Mm -hmm. that, that really is a nobody. But he just tries to pass off that air of, yeah, this is. He's gonna a, fake it till he makes yeah, it. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and that's well, what that's what makes this this movie work. You know, you got a couple of guys that have some ideas of <laughs> how to make this business work, and then you got Bill Murray who's just selling it. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know. Well, the thing is, you had at the beginning, like, like the original three Ghostbusters. They're scientists, but like at the beginning, uh, Bill Murray's uh, cheating. Yeah, because they're 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 like they know paranormal stuff exists. They've got the equipment. They've got all of the all of the data they need, and Bill Murray's cheating because yeah. he's trying to get laid. <laughs> because in that in that little uh, card test, yeah. the one guy's obviously he's like. <laughs> He, he, he's na he's yeah he's he's naming he's like shocking the guy for not not naming the name the shapes right and the other girl the girl is not saying anything right and he's like oh you're just a natural at this so but but the thing is he's not impressed by the fact that this dude yeah knows the cards because he knows how this works he, right. he like the the thing about the paranormal. As the paranormal starts to unfold, none of them are actually surprised that there are ghosts. Not really. Yeah. They're just kind of like, yeah. oh, the, the the thing that gets them is the fact that they're able to catch them yeah. and, and like do something with them. Like the the fact that they exist, not yeah. so much. They like they've got all this all the data. They're scientists. They're like, ah, oh, you know, yeah, this is a thing. Mm -hmm. The 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 shocker is that the box works. And they're like. And then, then he steals the uh, the, 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 the the reactor the, right. the, the jet pa the reactor packs, <laughs> but um, that's what's so great about it is that it's, it's the 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 subtext of like no these guys are really really smart yeah, yeah. but they're they're just using their smarts to get laid and not have to re work real mm -hmm. jobs yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you have to, and you have to say it too, man. It's, 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 it's you're always going to talk about these things, but man, these effects still look great. They still really hold up. They do, and well, getting Bernie Wrightson in for the librarian, yeah, and for a couple of the other monsters, yeah, and... yeah, it's, it, it still looks fantastic. The, the thing, and you guys have mentioned it on Short Bus and Hell Ming and everything else, and we mentioned it on Scary Dad, is the 80s were kind of relentless. Because even last week we talked about Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Like, man, this, that, yeah. that turned into a childhood fantasy to a childhood nightmare like that. Yep. Didn't take much to turn it into that. Just kind of change the light a little bit and a, and, and a little bit of makeup, and then boom, suddenly it's scary. The 80s did not pull punches with whether or not you were in a comedy 
Like three men and a baby. Right. My, my, my wife put that on the other day. Yeah. Three men and a baby. It is the cutest movie ever. <laughs> then just insert a bunch of Russian drug dealers, and all of a sudden you've got a kidnapping, <laughs> drug dealing, Miami Vice mo- heist movie. Like, what yeah. happened to. What happened to not being able to figure out diapers? Like, this is weird. Yeah. But that's the way the 80s worked. Yeah. Well, they d- they <laughs> discovered they discovered how to really fine-tune the blockbuster, right? Oh, yeah. So the same thing that makes Ghostbusters work is the same thing that made Pee-wee's Big Adventure work, right? It's appealing to kids. You got some cool effects. But then you also got a little scare factor that's just scary enough, but not too scary, right? Mm-hmm. So, it, it's it's you know, that's a kid mentality right there. All right, scare me, but don't scare me too much, right? That's that's really what these movies kind of played to. And then you make a comedy with you know adult humor laced into it, and you've got a blockbuster that people can take their kids and go see and cover their ears from time to time. But for the most part, kids are enjoying the movie too. Yeah, we're we're having we're having a uh, little bit of a discussion here because I don't I don't remember what movie it was, but my wife was like, I don't remember that movie having that many curse words in it, and I'm like, well, <laughs> this is the '80s. Pretty much, if they were allowed to have one, they yeah. got it. They yeah. they they just took it and uh, ran with it. And also, if they were allowed a scary scene, a dead body. Some boobs, yep. like standards. <laughs> like those are just staples. And, and so, like, then as a producer, you're sitting there being like, you have to like at the poll. You're like, I don't know which one I'm going to check. It's like I, I got <laughs> boobs, I got f word, or I got like. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. you checked all three, and you got an rated R, and then the kids wanted to see it even more. Sure, <laughs> like. But um, Ghostbusters didn't really have any of those. They had scares, and mm-hmm. it's fair. You had uh, um, you had Sigourney Weaver, you know, looking looking pretty 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 saucy here. Uh huh. And she was <laughs> oh. really really she was she was really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have to say, like, I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> but then. Then of course you have Bill, who's who's the dick. Yeah. Of uh, of uh, like that's that's what the. Yeah. If, if Bill Murray and I love Bill Murray, I love Bill Murray. If you're listening to the podcast right now, Bill Murray, <laughs> I love you so much. And I followed the chive, and I've got you your face on a T-shirt and all of that stuff. Except for your resume, if you have to write a resume, Bill Murray, say what has been your career experience. You say. Playing a dick on TV <laughs> or movies. That, there you go. Kind there you go. It. Yeah. <laughs> because Sigourney Weaver, she's like, hey, I need help. He's like, I'm here to help you. And then he's sitting there, like, <laughs> play, play, messing around with her piano and, like, making fun of her laundry, <laughs> like, making fun of her groceries. And yeah. she's just like, I invited you over here for a reason. He's like, ah, I just came here to get laid. I don't know. Right. I really don't know what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, I know about. what the reason is, and we haven't got there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Until later, whenever he starts piecing together, like, these are actually problems. It's just, yeah. Like, was it his, Was it her refrigerator? What did he look into that he opens it up and yeah. it's like... Rah! Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh... <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a thing. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it, 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 it's such a well put together movie, and, and again, uh-huh. being that it was that group working together, uh, you know, it's it's almost like you're getting to that point to where this is as good as it's going to get with this group, and then it's going to start falling off from there, right? And it's mm-hmm. that's really what this movie is is the pinnacle of all that and you know look at us i mean we're, we're still we're talking about it here we've had a recent remake <coughs> we've got another that. we've got a continuation movie supposedly coming out so from the trailer what well and 
We're not quite into commercial territory yet, but I'll go ahead and play that uh, trailer if you just want to take a pause. What what did you think of that trailer? Well, I mean, it, it's it's. At first, I thought, okay, it's it's kind of like what you're hearing George Lucas say now, <laughs> with what happened with the last trilogy, with Star Wars. It's kind of like, uh, hey, let's try to set things back to right. <laughs> That's really what I got out of it. It's it, it's exciting, but it's also a thing of. You know, you're probably just doing this out of necessity because somebody peed in your Wheaties, you know. <laughs> That's true. I didn't see the remake. Um, I've heard differing opinions. I can't have opinions on a movie I didn't see. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's, so, it's, just, it's just that thing. Our problem is always going to be, they're going to remake everything. Lord help us, there's rumors of a Princess Bride remake out there right now. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> and that's exactly what I mean. People love the movie. It's popular. So this is the way the movie companies think. Hey, this was really popular back in the day. People are still talking about it now. If we make a new version, we'll introduce it to a whole new generation. The old group will come see it and get pissed off, and the new generation will love it and think it's the best thing ever. That's the play. Mm-hmm. It really is. But whatever version but you see first is the one you're always going to be in love with. That's going to be the one you think that... 76 King Kong is my favorite King Kong movie. Yep. That's right, folks. I said it. <laughs> you know. Hey, dude, 33 King Kong, dude, that was like 70 years before I was born. Right, was, right. Yeah. You know, 40 years before yeah. I was born. And if they even made... When they make this newest version of King Kong, I'm going to go, yeah, that looks really great, and it's great, but I still love the 76 King Kong. Because it's the one well, that made the impact. You, 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 you're, well, yeah, also, you're not ever going to beat Jeff Bridges. <laughs> <laughs> Je, Je, Jeff Bridges is king. He's the big Lebowski. Yeah. He's, he's King Kong. <laughs> like, dude. Um, but it's, but the no, same, like, it's the same thing with this like movie, that. too, though. I mean, regardless of what version they come out with, even with bringing everybody back for another version, you're, it's still not going to have what this one's got. Heck, even part always, two didn't have what this one had, you know. I'm always big into sequels as opposed to yeah. prequels right. or reimaginings yeah. or any of that. If you're like, okay, here's a sequel, it's sure. like um, th things and things like Mandalorian, where it's like, okay, mm -hmm. there's all this Star Wars crap that people can argue about, but then you have a capable writer come in and say, you know what? I don't care about all this other crap. This happened right. over here. And we've got a good story, capable characters, and we can just run with it. We, I've got something um, to tell you when we get off of here about the Star Wars galaxy in a, in a little bit. I don't want to share it on this show just yet. So <laughs> I'm, I'm all for it. But I want to get back to Ghostbusters because of that trailer. Because yeah. that trailer looks like, to me, that trailer was awesome. I got sure. chills from it. Yeah, because it's got it's got Egon's progeny. It's obviously right. it's not his kids; it's his grandkids or somebody else's grandkids telling his kids that they need to wake up and be part of things. Um, but going back to the original Ghostbusters, the the like you said, the fear factor, the scares, the the I mean, it's a perfect scary movie. It's a perfect comedy. Yeah, it's it's a perfect. <laughs> like I said earlier, earlier in the episode, the pre Giuliani New York, where it was, it was kind, it was well, not kind of, it was dangerous as hell. Like yeah. just walking around, like you, you like, it's all dirty. Yeah, it's all, it's all street demolition sites everywhere. Everything it, was it, torn it, down. It, it's, it's rough. It's it's pre hip hop. You know, like there's no pop culture celebrating all this stuff. It's just yeah not a good place to be and yet it is the greatest it is the shining beacon of the world is this is the biggest <laughs> city in, in in america and which is new york is a strange thing like for you, you guys who are listening who are not from texas or not from tennessee new york is a strange yeah. entity for the rest of us because like 
as you grow up, all of the things happen in either New York or L.A. And if you live in America and you know how things are in New York or L.A., you kind of don't want to be in New York or L.A. <laughs> Last place you want to be, you know. <laughs> you, you just kind of really don't because it's 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 weird and it's strange. And you're not going to get too deep into it. But 19... 19- 84 New York with the Ghostbusters is a place you really want to be because you can rent an abandoned firehouse. <laughs> you can you can buy a, a 50s ambulance right. and outfit it. <laughs> and you can start a business without the government completely shutting you down. Well, actually they tried real hard, but they already they had too many things in the in the in the trap. <laughs> but yeah, that, that freaking government just shows up and is like, hey, you're right. operating an illegal reactor. And they're like, yep. yeah, you you want me to pull this lever turn, and just turn them loose. The city? Yep. <laughs> and then, then you can also, in, in New York, you can get Ray Parker Jr. to do your theme song and get sued over it. Oh, yeah, there's that. Because <laughs> it sounded too take... much like, uh, I want a new drug. Yeah. You want to take a break real quick, and we'll come back, and then uh, we'll talk about it some more. Ghosts. Hello, Ghostbusters. They're real. You do? You have? They're here. Dangerous. Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. All right, that's bad. Okay. All right, important safety tip. Thanks, Egon. They're professionals. Oh. I'm the chairman of the largest paranormal removal company in America. Oh! You see it? They're all that stands between you and the end of the world. The city is headed for a disaster of biblical proportion. Real wrath of God type stuff. Exactly. Fire and brimstone coming down from the sky. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Your girlfriend lives in the corner penthouse of Spook Central. You want this body? Is this a trick question? <laughs> Stick. Hold. Him up. Smoke it. Bring him hard. Ready. Ghostbusters. Ray Parker Jr. was just trying to be Huey Lewis. They hired him because Huey Lewis turned him down. Right. Which Huey Lewis was so big in Back to the Future, you would have thought, like, could you? Could you imagine being Huey Lewis and being like, not only was I Huey Lewis, I was also Huey Lewis from Back to the Future right. and the Ghostbusters. Right. But he turned down Ghostbusters, so Ghostbusters went and found Ray Parker Jr. I mean, if, just, if, if Huey would have done just, that, he'd, he'd only have one more person standing in his way, and that's Kenny Loggins. Mm-hmm. Poor, poor Huey. Yeah. And then he got Sam Kinison to just, like, dog on him and just completely ruin him. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam kind of does that anyways, regardless of who you are. <laughs> the reality is, I know a lot of... I, I've, I've listened to a lot of Sam Kinison stand-up. Me too. I've never heard anyone be so brutal... <laughs> as Sam Kinison was to Huey Lewis, and just Japan. like honestly, like as soon as as, as <laughs> Kinison's star was rising, he <laughs> just hit Huey in the face, and Huey fell down and never really quite got back up. It's true, and 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 Sam's been dead for like forty five years, <laughs> so <laughs> like, uh. <laughs> uh, poor poor Huey. We'll have, to do a, we'll have to try to do a Sam Kinison show somehow. <laughs> Don't know how we could pull that off, but I'm sure Dude, we can talk about I, it. 
<laughs> Remember when we first started this episode, this 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 podcast? I was like, dude, I blew out my voice back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't even pretend to do a Sam Kennison yeah. impression. Well, ah! <laughs> <laughs> not gonna work. <laughs> uh, you know, and I remember I, I wasn't really into him that much back in the day because I, I came from Carlin, you know, George Carlin and, and these guys. I was really into a lot of stand up. I liked Sam because I just thought of him as the guy that yelled. But in hindsight and going back and rediscovering everything, which I did about mm, 15 years ago. Extremely funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, very, uh, he loved to push the boundaries. There's no doubt about it. But he was extremely funny, and I think people kind of miss that. Anyways, that's that's a different show. But uh, I, I think we just like we we got to warp back to yeah, Ghostbusters. Exactly. Ghost, Go, Ghostbusters was just full of too many comedians. Too many comedians. There's too many moving parts inside of Ghostbusters that you can't. It's hard to talk about the movie itself without going yeah. Bill Murray, yeah. Sigourney Weaver, sure. Dan Aykroyd, Rick Moranis, just, man. Like, we keep dude, dancing around Rick. I didn't want to say it because you're going to send me into my happy place. <laughs> Rick Moranis. When 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 I sent you the text earlier, I was like, "Do you want to talk about Ghostbusters or Spaceballs?" Yeah. And I said this strange last... brew. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, nah. The last two days ago, was not yesterday, the day before, two days ago, um, wife sitting there playing around with the, 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 the remote control, the kids. Kids, we're still on quarantine, right? Kids are, yeah, I don't want to watch that. I don't watch yeah. that. I want to fight about this one. Wife's like, little shop of horrors. I was like, <laughs> Little Shop of Horrors. <laughs> Cue the music. Done. Rick Moranis. Yeah. Rick Moranis doesn't sing or well, he sings the Audrey song, but right. he doesn't he doesn't dance. Rick Moranis is a like, perfect. Yep. And just about like you if if you have a bad movie and you want to make it good, hire Rick Moranis yeah. to just I, be on set for a while. I think that's a great way to put it. I think he was yeah he was that kind of person. He could really pull something out of the, out of the ditch for you. Ghostbusters, I wa- we watched it not too long ago, and it it really did for me. It was like, okay, all these other guys are funny. The situations, everything's hilarious. Rick Moranis. <laughs> Is the movie? Yeah, he sa- he saves the whole movie. Right, like every scene that he's in is perfect, and everything he says or does is hilarious. I I really think the only other person that could have been in that role is maybe John Candy. How weird! Because I was thinking the exact same thing. If you had a bad movie and you need somebody to pull it out of the gutter, John Candy. That they are so mm-hmm. much alike as far as. Just that natural ability, which they both came from the same, you know, SCTV, you know, group. So, yeah, yeah. The, the, you you just imagine them in a in a backlot room, like in a in a plywood room, yeah. sitting there reading lines off each other and just being like, "Okay, how to make this funny? How about if I stand <laughs> up and like turn my head sideways? Or how how about if I just yell? How about if I cry? Like you know, just like." But Rick Moranis, yeah, in Ghostbusters, like. It's, I mean, how how good do you have to be to upstage Murray? Yeah. Uh, how good do you have to be to upstage any of them? Right. And, and <laughs> Bill Murray is the romantic to Sigourney <laughs> Weaver, <laughs> except for it's hard to even say that, right? I mean, <laughs> he, yeah, but but he's the he's he's the the romantic straight. But then you have poor Louis Tully, who's got a crush. She lives across the hall. <laughs> and like, hey, you want to come to my party? <laughs> and he's just, he's so nerdy, but so sweet. And like, he's the accountant. And, it, it, dude, Rick Moranis just steals so many scenes just by being yeah. in them. 
that sure. he actually, in my opinion, after watching, it is a Rick Moranis movie. Yeah. Big, they're like, it is, it is him. Well, <laughs> the, poor, the, poor the, movie, guy. the movie is star power, man. I mean, it, it's it's got so much of everything in it, and I think it's another reason why the movie works so well is it's kind of like being a Beatles fan or a Spice Girl fan like we talked about, a Kiss fan, because there's somebody for everybody. You're going to identify with all these different characters. And Rick Moranis, for the most part, is who most people identify with. You didn't Strange. ask to be put in this situation. It just happened. It happened to a nice guy, and it shouldn't have. But it all turns out like it should, right? I mean, that's that's the ride. The the great part is because Lewis is such a likable guy, but then also the demon dog that possesses right. him is also a likable guy. Yeah. Because when he's got the helmet on, and he's just talking about like how the end of the world's gonna come, and he's just so smiley. He's just <laughs> he, he like he completely impersonates a dog, and he's just like, oh yeah. You know, the wrath is coming down, and this is just going to happen. And it's just like, he's just so happy as it's as it's happening. He's just yeah. like. <laughs> and, and, All right, time for the real question. <laughs> sorry, man. I'm just, like, I, I'm just gushing over the awesomeness that is Rick Moranis. Yes. Hey, You're going to have to do a whole movie on him. But... I, I, I totally <laughs> agree, man. I'm a big fan, too. So let's let's talk about this because this is this could be a mixed bag, especially being the age I was fourteen, fifteen. This movie came out. So how attractive was David Bowie looking Zool? <laughs> <laughs> she was scary. She was scary, but she... with 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 the with the see through clothing and the spiked up hair. I don't know, man. Voice. Yeah. She, dude, she she reminded me of, like skinny old grandmas with that like little. Remember the uh, the cigarette case thing that was yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like they, it was like a little leather case and would uh-huh. hold your pack of cigarettes and, and the, the lighter, little, little twisty thing at the top that popped it She's open. Like, like everything. I am so. <laughs> like, oh, that's not good. You need to zap that or. <laughs> go up the hill and buy her some Schaefer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was not. A, I was like, dude, Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. Do you remember this? It was, it's, we, we are a clean show. Do you remember this? Um, somewhere in the late 80s, 80s-ish, maybe early 90s. The headlines on like Playboy, you'd go to the the convenience store and you'd. But this is before they wrapped them in black plastic, guys. So yeah, it was like, and, and and whenever these magazines still existed. So anyway, <laughs> you'd go sit there and see like Playboy and Penthouse and Hustler sitting on the rack, and you'd see a headline that'd say something about like Sigourney Weaver, and then you'd see like a little. Micro headline be like, says she enjoyed being in Ghostbusters. <laughs> but you had you had that hope that maybe, maybe, <laughs> and like that's one of those things that's just always in my mind. Like, oh, one of these days. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm a hornball, bro. What, what you gonna hey, do? Hey, well, <laughs> I, I've got. It's weird. I got something that's kind of like that story, but kind of the other end of the spectrum. Linda Carter had a TV special. Oh, I may have told you say this. Say no more. I would be right there. I would be like, <laughs> I'm buying it, and then like later on, be like, mentioned her in an article. I'd be like. Ugh. <laughs> But she had a TV special that came on where she's going to do a tribute to Kiss. Well, as a kid, I heard Kiss was going to be on the show. It was not Kiss by any means. It was these guys that were dancers that looked like, you know, I don't even know how to say this nicely. Uh, they were Kiss. <laughs> and uh, I remember being... Solid gold dancers. Yeah, exactly. I remember being 
devastated because it wasn't Kiss. But the good side of it was this outfit that Linda Carter was wearing. I didn't pay attention to really anything else after that. No, she she saved it. She, it was her show. That's right. And she, and, and she was and showing. She was in it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's hard to really say a whole lot about it. The movie is iconic. It, it's it's, you know, like I said, it spawned, you know, sequels, cartoons, games, toys. I mean, it it it's just one of those '80s phenomenons. It's it's, it's still there, and yeah. like I said, like, uh, um. Like I'm a I'm a huge fan of Dan Aykroyd. Sure. And he's done he's done a, he's done a lot of comedy. He's also done a lot of serious stuff. He's done writing, acting, producing. Like you, you, that's fine. Um, Bill Murray, I love Bill Murray. I love everything Bill Murray does. Yep. I, I've I've, I've I, it's it's very rare that I've seen anything that Bill Murray was in that I was like meh. Right. Um, Rick Moranis. He was mostly partnered up with uh, Ivan Reitman and Bill mm-hmm. Murray, and like, unfortunately, he just recently passed away. Yeah. And but even even that whole like, I'm too frightened. I- I'm so frightened. I'm beyond the capable capable of uh, rational thought. Like the the comedy that comes out of just being able to write that line, like <laughs> that is a very hard thing to say. He's like, I'm so scared that I can't even say the words that are coming out of my mouth right, right. now. Yeah. It, it, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson. He's the fourth Ghostbuster. He shows up. He's like, hey. And, and poor poor dude, man. Like his, <laughs> he, he was hired on for a much bigger role. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then like as his role got chopped out, he's like, what am I even doing here? They're like, you're in a movie with Bill Murray. Directed by Ivan Reitman, this is your legacy. Right, leave it alone. Yeah. It's like, oh crap. Well, I guess, I guess, <laughs> here we are. Enjoy the ride. And, and I'm sure that between Ghostbusters and The Crow, it's probably keeping him pretty yeah. happy. Sure. Ernie Ernie Hudson's awesome. I've met him a couple of times. He's he's a good guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. He might go home and like kick his dog or something. But he's been nice when I met him. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, dude, I remember being ten years old, watching that. Like, there was Karate Kid, there was Ghostbusters, there was Missing in Action, Rambo. Yeah. Like, all of these movies with the bad words cut out. <laughs> all of us church kids going over to the pastor's house. The, the, the preacher's house. Sure. And, and uh, like, like, would you rather be Storm Shadow or Snake Eyes? I don't know. Like, let's, I'll just hit you with a broomstick and see what you think about later. <laughs> but watching watching Ghostbusters with the, with the bad words taken out is one of the best best memories of my life That's it was awesome. so good and then watching it later i mean again we're talking about like a couple few weeks ago yeah it's like watching it later and being like oh my god rick moranis is, is the heart of this movie he doesn't yeah. he didn't mean to be i don't think they meant for that to be but it really is yep that's that's what this movie means to me is like childhood summer times mm-hmm. bouncing around on trampolines kicking each other in the face yep. um you know do you really believe yeah. in ghosts like well they wouldn't have said it if it wasn't true <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just about cla- you? just classic stuff man i mean it's it's right there in my preteens and just you know, it, it. You were just consumed with it. You know, going. I went to the theater and seen it. You know, saw it on HBO twenty plus times. 
every time it comes out with some new format, I'm having to buy it. It's just it's just one of those. It's, <laughs> you grew up with it. It's a part of your family, and you know, uh, it's hard to even imagine people that haven't seen it. You know, it just seems like it should almost be like. They should hand you a copy of it when you come into this country, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just that part of Americana that I don't know. It is it's it's just a staple. It it, it dude, it really is. I mean, yeah. it really is. It, it's it's there's there's so many different different random scenes. There's so many little quotes where it's just. <laughs> like I mean, I can't, I can't go back to the. Uh, to, I can't go back. They expect results. <laughs> like, I, I gotta, like I can't. I can't go back to the. <laughs> and and like, see, I, I never was a big fan of part two, but you know, it's just one of those things where, you know, I, I don't know. It just didn't do it for me. I've never been a fan of part two either. Like, I've seen the first one probably at least a dozen times, maybe 15, 20 times. The first one is so classic. Yeah. Those guys c- crawling out under the sidewalk, <laughs> like, after, after they, like, they're dead. Yeah. After yeah. they crawl out from under the sidewalk, it's like, okay, we've won. And then you start off part two with, like, ah, oh, that didn't happen. Yeah. Like, eh, yeah. <laughs> you're not very good writers. Right. I can't I just can't dig it. Like Yeah. The, Home um, Alone three was better than that. Oh, so. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least Home Alone two acknowledged the fact that Home Alone one happened. <laughs> in Home Alone in, in, in Ghostbusters two they're like, Oh, that didn't happen. That was a hallucination by the Ghostbusters. That was just a money making scheme. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> hey, Home Alone, the, the, Home Alone Two is the shiz, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love the second one. Oh no 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 no! I didn't you say about, you talking about three. I said that that is like Home Alone Three, right. saying that Home Alone Two didn't two happen. didn't happen, no. right? <laughs> Uh, and and again, it's it's one of those things where you're making a movie and wow, it's a hit. So somehow we got to follow it up. It's it's no different than you know doing Jaws, and then you're like, okay, now we got to have a sequel. What? We and we just killed the shark. <laughs> and the thing is, man, and I don't th- I don't think this has been recorded. I mean, we mentioned it on Facebook, but. I was inspired by our own episode to go back and watch Jaws 2. And you know yeah. what? It's awesome. Yeah, it is. That's the, that's the whole thing about the show is it's awesome. Like, I watched the show that we talked about and it sucked. I'll, <laughs> I'll do that too. Like, it was totally not awesome. But, dude, Jaws 2 holds up. It does. Yeah. And um, I'm st- I'm still ha- waiting. Not, not waiting for a copy, but waiting for a chance to watch Orca. We're 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 kind of hitting the end of our time. We we've kind of danced around <laughs> Ghostbusters. Uh, Ghostbusters well, is look, awesome. With that being said, with that being said, maybe maybe, and and people can let us know out there. Maybe we should check out Ghostbusters Part Two again and give it a fair shake again mm-hmm. and see if see if uh, if our minds have changed. Maybe so. Um, Angie wanted us to talk about comedies. Yep. I said, hey, you know what? I want to talk about summer slashers because not not because like, dude, I'm 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 big into the horror stuff. You don't say, but I, I, <laughs> hey, but I just thought for for whatever reason, if you're going into summer, I mean, we're at the end of June. Yeah, we might as well just be like, hey, I like Jason. I like sure summer camp and whatever. And then I thought, you know what? Let's talk about some comedies. Yeah, Ghostbusters is also a horror comedy, so it's fun. Um, it's but those, guys, what? Yeah, what, the, what do you want? You, what do you want us to talk about? Yeah, we'll talk about it, or we'll say, 
eh, we'll talk about what we want to talk about. <laughs> We're halfway Ooh. through the summer. It's hot. This whole COVID thing. Oh my god, man! We didn't have a chance to talk off off uh, air before we started, but um, so you know, at this point, you know, Houston's like an epicenter. Yeah. And and so I went to the store earlier so I could pick up some toilet paper and paper towels because I'm Supplies. just terrified. <laughs> I guess what guess what's not available? <laughs> toilet paper and toilet paper, paper towels. Yeah. So instead, I bought beer and cheese because. <laughs> <laughs> Which keeps you from yeah. eating the other stuff, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> because, because it's freaking hilarious. Because. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Crazy times we're in, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's insanity. What I was going to say. Before you made me laugh too hard, is toilet paper and paper towel supply was just fine like four days ago. <laughs> I ran up to the store to buy some some like chicken seasoning and some vinegar for you know all of your nasty thoughts, you, you <laughs> people. But that's what I needed, and I happened to look over my shoulder and be like, "Damn, there ain't no toilet paper." And there's also no toilet or uh, paper towels. Like, this is a weird situation when I'm holding a jar of vinegar. (laughs) 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 I got home, and like the next couple of days happened, and wife's like, hey, go to the store, pick up paper towels and pickles and more vinegar and some carrots and like all this stuff. Guess what? There ain't. There's no vinegar. <laughs> yep. There's, All your there's basics, no carrots. Man. Yep. There's there's no carrots. Yep. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I was. I was honestly. I was trying to go into a joke, and then it. Re- I realized, dude. Yeah. There's no paper towels. There's no toilet paper. There's no carrots. Yeah. And there's no vinegar. Sure enough. This is this is a weird weird situation. <laughs> And we, so, we've already uh, kind of gone through that here, where you know those supplies are running out, and now it's not a big deal. But if we end up having round two, guess what? And guess what's what? amazing is people are buying toilet paper. Like, I mean, I understand you you need toilet paper to, you know, if you're gonna be quarantined for a month or so. But they're buying it like for a year. I mean, my wife's got enough toilet paper that we don't need any till you know, I don't know, <laughs> way past Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, that's the thing is everything was just fine and then they announced like uh oh we're into some crap and they're like we bought, but all the toilet paper's gone <laughs> well your delivery system starts shutting down and people are not bringing the stuff in like they should you know it, it affects everything and yeah yeah this will be uh, definitely <laughs> something that you know, we can go back and tell our grandkids and stuff about, you know, there was a time when you couldn't get toilet paper. They'd be like, yeah, yeah. Sit down <laughs> before tr- you fall the down, The kids are going to be like, why is a grocery store built out? The grocery store is built out in, like, eighths. And then, like, quarters, thirds. <laughs> it's like, why is there that much toilet paper? You're going to be like, well, there was a time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I think we've hit the end of our rope. <laughs> Ghostbusters. What's your, thing, what's your what's your favorite thing about Ghostbusters? Oh, it's At Bill Murray. End. It's Bill Murray, yeah. and it's again the effects. I'm still amazed when I see these effects because I love this time period because this is when we were really getting blown away by some top notch special effects right before the the introduction of the CGI stuff. Man, ILM was just killing it at this point. Totally agree. Like you said, like for for me with with horror or comedy or anything, like anything that just like keeps you in and you watch special effects, especially with the, the Ghostbusters, it's like boom, here's lightning all over a building and your yeah. Your your brain realizes that it's drawn, right. it's it's fake. 
at the same time, it's so well done that your brain only recognizes that for a second before you just... Yeah. It's like reading a comic book. Where, it, like, reading a comic book and being like, okay, well, things are uh, slightly sideways, but not really. So I'm just into it. Um, right. Man, I love Ghostbusters. Bill Murray... We've yeah. got to like we've got to go through a whole Rick Moranis filmology because that's you one can of al- my favorite people. You, you can almost take Rick Moranis, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd. I mean, and just go through all their stuff. I mean, I could talk about spies like us for days. Yep. <laughs> when what like I said, you know, like I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but the thing about Rick Moranis is. He's a little guy with big glasses. He's a nerd. Yep. And, like, he's a, but he's also, he's a nerd in the 80s. He's not a nerd, he's not a current nerd where right. nerds are kind of popular, like the size of your glasses kind of trendy. Ray Moranis is, is, he's, he's the definition of nerd. And yet. He could have been a tri lamb. He could have been a tri lamb. <laughs> but at the same time, he's also a massively talented actor making millions of dollars being a nerd. Yeah. And he's so good at it. It's like watching a, like any kind of anybody, like watching a guitar player, watch watching a guitar player playing classical music. And and you watch his his hands barely move, mm-hmm. and and you're like, oh my god, he's playing so many notes out of so little movement. He's a master at his craft. That's Rick Moranis to me. He's yeah. just so good at what he does that he like. He kind of sneaks around behind the curtain, and he's a ninja, really. He's a ninja, like what you're talking about. He's like <laughs> so freaking good that you don't even realize he's there until he leaves, and then you're like, "What happened to Mar- Moranis?" Yeah, so he just hung it up, uh, man. You know, and it's 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 an incredible story when you dig into it. But he left it all behind for family, and that's man, you couldn't do a more noble thing. It's kind of like it's why you got into it in the first place because you had a talent. And then you want to support your family, and then you find out that it's keeping you from being there and being supportive of your family. You know, what can you say? That's, uh, he's a mighty big man. Yep. He's awesome. Yep. I agree. Let's close this down. Let's get together next week. All right. Don't know if we're going to talk about, I don't know if we're going to talk about (laughs) Rick, but we might. Um, but. Hey, we'll see you next time. We love you. Keep it awesome.